The following video is one in a series on spiritual resilience training, a non-religious view of personal values and their dynamics with others. The contents reflect a variety of principles and practices of systems theory and relational counseling for team building and family resilience. Although the series is intended to support Army Corps values, each video also encourages the viewer to reflect on their current prominent values in specific situations and to consider what values may be more appropriate to means and results that are honorable and helpful with others. Chaplain Dillard initiates creating and posting these videos. Their contents and YouTube's linked videos do not necessarily reflect specific beliefs, practices, requirements, or endorsements of the Department of Defense, its subordinate organizations, or other groups with which Chaplain Dillard is affiliated. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about some very specific types of counseling techniques under the umbrella of solution focus. A lot of counseling focuses more on uh, beliefs, cognitive behavioral type stuff, that if we perceive things differently than we're currently perceiving them, then that can affect our behavior. And there's some validity to that, of course. Others is more uh, values based. If we love certain things or shift our emphasis on certain things that we treasure, uh, there are goals that too affect our behavior and of course that has its validity. Uh, there are many different types of counseling and many of them get into the why. Why do you believe that? Why are you valuing that? And to weigh the pros and cons. Solution focused counseling does not look at the why. It looks more at the what of the solution. How are we going to be successful? If you had successes in the past, how did you do that? And to help them repeat those basic types of processes to once again get some success under their belt. So we're going to look at some very specific methods under solution focus and uh, we may take two or three videos to do this because it, although it's a simple type of counseling there are many techniques or methods in solution focus. Solution focus counseling generally starts with asking them to describe the problem. Now you might not say it in those terms especially because in peer counseling they're not your counselee, they're your spouse, your uh, teenager, somebody who works for you, or a neighbor, uh, somebody who is more of a peer than a professional client counseling relationship. But you might start off with what's on your mind. And most likely they're going to start describing some problem. Now remember, solution focus is focused on solutions. So we need to genuinely listen to them but to ask them to be as specific as possible because we want to listen for the flip side of what they're describing because they're really describing the absence of certain solutions. Let's say one of your children, young or old, has come to you uh, and you're the mom or dad, whoever you are, and they want to talk to you about how your spouse has been writing them about how they spend their money, whether it's money they got for their birthday or their allowance or job or whatever. Um, Mom, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure, honey, what's on your mind? You've just implicitly asked them to describe the problem. And they might say, well, Dad is always riding me on how I spend my money. It's my money. Why can't I spend it any way I choose? You want to help them describe that more specifically. Think about it like they're bringing you a screw. A screw could be a cross tip, a flat tip, a star tip, uh, an Allen wrench type screw, uh, many different shapes of screws and you want to help them identify which screwdriver, which solution is going to fit that screw. So the more specifically they describe the problem to you, the more you can help them be specific with the solution. Does that make sense? So you might say, well, uh, you've talked to me about your concerns before. Is there something that's happened most recently? Yeah, we were out in the mall and I wanted to buy this certain CD and he said that was too much. Uh, he said I should wait until it's on sale. Um, so is is the problem that you want the CD now? Is it that you feel like your dad is not respecting you generally? Is it that you were with a friend and they were uh, embarrassed or you was embarrassed because this happened in front of your friends? Now you might not offer those many scenarios. I'm just giving those to you as some examples that you might be able to draw out of them. So the more specifically you can get them to describe the problem, the screw, speaking as an analogy, uh, the better you're able to help them begin to see what type of solutions might fit that problem. Does that make sense? So hearing them describe the, the problem 
very specifically so that you can later begin to uh, help them think of some solutions. That's step number one. The next thing, and generally this is in sequence, is to help them state their goal. And you can do that a number of ways. Well, honey, if you were to replay that situation, what do you wish would have happened? And they might say, well, I wish you'd let me spend my money however I want to. Or they might say, I wish he could have pulled me aside away from my friend to talk to me. Or I wish dad would treat me with respect in general. This is just one example. Um, but get them to say it in a specific way. And if they're having trouble, you might say, well, if I was a fly on the wall in that music shop, what would I have seen that looked right and that would satisfy you? I would see you and dad doing what or saying what. That might help them to be even more specific. Um, or you might say, well, I mean, I've got about 10, 15 minutes I can talk to you. If this conversation is helpful to you, what will have happened by the end of the conversation? And they might say, well, you'll decide you'll go talk to Dad for me. That might be their solution, which you might say, eh, that's not a solution. I want you to have a better relationship yourself with your dad. Uh, and, but you want to be gentle and helpful with that and say, well, that sounds like you want me to be your solution. And there are times that I should do that, but I want you to have a good relationship with your dad. So by the end of our 10 or 15 minutes together, how will you know if this conversation has gone well for you? And they could say a number of things. Well, I'll know how to talk to dad without him getting upset and raising his voice. Or I will help dad be able to understand my perspective so he knows what's important to me. Or dad and I will come to some type of agreement about how to disagree or how to have conversations with my friends when my friends are around that don't embarrass me. Uh, get them to articulate that goal because they're really um, trying to articulate a target to shoot at a target to go for, and the old saying, uh, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time, very much applies here. So uh, you want it to be their goal statement, not your goal for them. Another type of method in solution-focused counseling is to have them identify exceptions, times that the specific problem that they named did not happen. And whether uh, they named issues of respect or resolving conflicts in front of their friends, or dealing with money, whatever it is that they more specifically described, you just ask them, when's the last time that didn't happen between you and dad? And they might say, well, it always happens, whether they're uh, actually your subordinate, your neighbor, family member. If they're upset, they may uh, generalize and state something that's a little exaggerated. Uh, and you might say, okay, I understand you're upset, but if you think back, there's probably a time when it didn't happen, or it happened much, much less. When was that time? And let's go back to the example of, of your child, whether they're 7 or 17 or a 27-year-old living with you. Well, I guess there was that time a decade ago when I asked, asked him to buy me some gum in the store, and he said, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, well, what did you do to help him say yes to spending that money? Because remember, solution focus is about their behavior that led to the solution. You can say, what do you mean? Well, you helped create some type of environment where he was more likely to say yes. What did you do? Well, I asked him nicely. I said, please. I, I waited until he wasn't busy. Good for you. That's smart. You showed respect, uh, discernment about timing. You phrased it in a way that helped him to hear you. Um, what else? Well, I knew it wasn't a whole lot of money and he could probably afford it. So you kept reasonable expectations. Great. Those are all things that can help um, help that solution to come about. So you've already begun to identify some solutions or some possible solutions. If they say, well, that's not going to work for this, well, well, tell me how the problem is different than whatever we just described. So maybe it's not exactly disrespect. Maybe it's something else. Or it's not uh, specifically about uh, resolving conflict in front of friends, but that particular friend. Or it's not about money, but the fact that it is their money and they earned it and it's, it's more about freedom to live their own uh, life, making some of their own choices. Again, getting more specific. Now we're almost looking at the size of the, the screw uh, so that we can decide on the size of the screwdriver to fit it. Does that make sense? All right, we're going to pause the video here uh, on solution-focused techniques because we want to keep it relatively short. I know you're more likely to watch a video 
that's a few minutes long than is 10 or 15 or 20 minutes long. And uh, please come back and join us next time and we will look at more methods of solution-focused counseling. At the release date of this video, I am stationed with Research Development and Engineering Command, RDECOM, at Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland. Because the majority of our personnel are in this area, I spend most of my time here. I do, however, travel to our distant units based on command priorities and budget. I place these videos on YouTube for broad visibility to Army personnel and their families, but I hope the videos will be helpful to others too. If you are assigned to RDECOM and want to request specific topics by video, training on site or by VTC, or confidential counseling on site or by secure webcam, you can contact me at jeffrey.d.dillard.mil at mail.mil.